Okay, how's everybody doing? My name is Dave Allison. I'm uh, I'm on Instagram at West Texas Bug. I'm a ambassador for Norvice, and um, I uh, tie for Semperfly, Moonlit, and uh, sorry about the uh, technical difficulties. I thought I could uh, keep my phone sideways. So anyway, I'm going to go ahead and start. Uh, the first fly I'm going to tie is a um, it's a Wally wing. But instead of using duck, um, I'm going to use a turkey feather. And turkey is a lot different to tie with than duck because it's, um, it's a lot stiffer. Um, it makes a much more durable fly. Uh, but there are a couple things that you have to do in order to get it to, uh, to work right. So what I'm going to use uh, for my turkey, this is just nature spirit. Turkey flats and white. Uh, you could use cream. You could use whatever color you'd like. And the uh, hook I'm going to tie on. This is a Moonlit MLO 52. I'm going to tie it in a size 12 just because it's big for the video. And um, so let me pop this one out. I haven't been on the vice in quite a while. My last show this year was the Boise show in January. I got Denver and Boise in, and then COVID hit, and um, I haven't been on the vice since. So, but I think I can remember how to do this. So, for thread, I'm going to use uh, Semperfly's uh, uh, wax thread. This is in uh, brown olive. This is eight dot. And what I want to do is I want to start my thread right behind the eye. And then I'm going to um, take it back halfway down the shank. Okay, when I get to the halfway point, I'm going to come back halfway. And this is how I'm going to know where to put my wing. Take the waist off. So what I need to do with this feather, <clears throat> first I have to get all the marabou, the fluff off of it. So I'm just going to strip it down. I'll remove all of this. You can see that's a pretty substantial stem, so that's got to be uh, discarded as well. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to grab it by the tip, and I'm going to Christmas tree it, just like I would with a duck feather. I have to make sure that I'm exactly even, though. Okay, so once I get that, separated like this, then I need to make these fibers sweep up and back. So I'm going to take my my thumb and my middle finger and I'm going to use my index finger to go right down the stem and I'm going to just kind of try to get this to sweep up and back. So you can see I got a little bit of an angle there and that's what I want. Okay, now i got to get rid of this stem. With a duck feather, you can just tie the stem in. But with a turkey, you certainly can't. So I want to measure from the notch right behind the eye, and I want to cut my stem to be the length of my hook shank. So I'm just going to come in here. And I'm going to go a little bit long on purpose and just bring my scissor points in and trim them. Okay, so now that stem might be, I might have gotten it right the first time. So you can see that stem is the same length as my hook shank. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring all this back. I'm going to keep teasing it up and back. And the tip of that stem that's sitting there that you can see, if I do this perfectly, the tip of that stem is going to sit straight on top of my hook shank. So I get that right about uh, one out of every 20 times. Um, it's not the end of the world if you don't, but that's what, uh, that's what you're striving for. So I've got the end of that stem sitting right over my thread. I'm going to flatten my thread out. I'm going to come over the top. I'm going to bring that down. That's going to flare it up. And then I'm going to, I should be able to sit this stem right on top. I'm going to go ahead and get that really secured. And then I want to cut my 
uh, waist feather off at an angle so that I can get a tapered body. Okay, so now I'm going to go ahead and, and tie that down. You see that gives me a nice taper. I come back up. Okay, now I want to see if I can get this stem to stand straight on top of the hook shank, perpendicular. So I can kind of get it around with my thread. I have to create a little bit of a thread dam in front. There we go. Sorry about that. I'm in Park City, Utah. I've got uh, fiber optic. I shouldn't be disconnecting. All right, so <clears throat> I've got my wing perpendicular on top of my hook shaft. All right, so now we're just tying a mayfly. So I'm going to go ahead and bring my thread down. And I can't go down the bend of the hook, so I have to stop about right here. And for a tail, I'm just going to use some Coke de Leon. And um, <clears throat> if you want to be real technical, you can use just three fibers. Um, if you think fish can count. And I'm going to pull off about three. I might have a few more here. Okay, so here's my fibers. And I don't measure these. What I do is I take them and hold them in my left hand. And I put them on my side of the hook at a 45 degree angle. And then I'll go ahead and take one wrap over the top and that brings my Coke de Leon right on top. And then I can take my butts. I can slide them forward till I get the length that I'm looking for. And then I can tie the butts in. Let's come in with my scissors and get rid of those. Okay. And now for my my tail, if I want to splay it, I can just take my fingernail, come underneath. Try to get a little bit of a splay in that. There we go. And I have a nice tail. And now the body can be anything you want it to be. I could do a, a goose biot here. I could do a, a peacock quill. Um, for this video, I'm just going to do some dubbing. And <clears throat> for dubbing, I'll use uh, Semperfly. This is a uh, super fine fly, uh, dry fly dubbing. Comes in these great little square holders. It packs a lot of dubbing in here. So I'll just go ahead and take a little bit. I'm going to use just some olive. Are you doing a film critic right now? Someone knows what it's called. No, this is a uh, this is a turkey wally wing. Everybody can see and hear okay? okay. And someone wants to know what size do you recommend for this fly? When so <clears throat> the size for this fly, if I'm, it depends on what, what, what mayfly I'm imitating. So if I'm going to tie a blue wing olive, I'm going to tie this on an, on an 18. And um, <clears throat> if I'm tying a, a, a green drake, I'm going to tie it on a size 10. Uh, if I'm going to tie a, um, a PMD, I'm going to tie it on a size 14. Uh, if I'm tying a gray drake or a brown drake, I may tie it on a size 12. Um, this is really, um, you know, you're going to change your color and change your size depending on what mayfly you're trying to imitate. You know, for this fly right now, I'm just, um, I'm just kind of showing you technique more than um, an actual bug. But I'm going to, I'm going to tie it in a olive, olive dubbing, and I'm going to wet my fingers here. I use one of these little uh, money counters. I do that at shows so I don't have to spit all over my fingers and then uh, hand somebody a fly when I get done. Plus it comes in handy if you got a lot of money to count. Okay, so I'm just going to twist on some dubbing. I want to keep it pretty thin, pretty sparse. And I just take my finger and slide my dubbing noodle up to my bug. Now, by just dubbing up, I've got that nice taper, and I stop right behind my wing, 
Now I'm going to put a hackle in, and what I have here, this is just a, um, a Cree hackle that I have laying on my desk. Um, if you want to know what size it is, it is a, it's about a 16. So I don't want to, I don't want to go too, too big with it. Actually, let me change that. I'm going to switch to something else. I'm going to go to a badger. And so this is a, uh, this is a uh, golden badger hackle. And when I tie these flies, you don't have to do this, but I like to go ahead and remove half of the uh, hackle. And that's on the leading edge. And so then I can just take my stem I'm going to tie it in at an angle here on my side, right behind the wing. A couple of secure wraps. I'm going to bring my wing back, and I'm going to wrap that stem forward and try not to try not to go past my eye. Okay. I'm going to save the Cree for the next fly. All right. So now I need to put some dubbing on the front. And normally, I start my dubbing right behind the eye and work back. But on this fly, I have to do it just the opposite because I have to finish up by my eye. So I'm going to go ahead and take a little bit of dubbing. That body's a little fat. That's a little fatter than I usually like to make them. I don't need a lot of dubbing here. One of the things that this dubbing is going to do is it's going to stand my wing up in the front as well. It's going to actually stand it up a little bit better. One more wrap there. Come forward, and my eye is nice and clean. I'm going to go ahead and throw a half inch in right here. Sorry if my hands look pretty rough. I've been building furniture for the last three months. So, anyway, all right, so now I'm going to go ahead and wrap this hackle. And I'm going to go ahead and get one wrap right behind the wing. And then I'll use the rotary. Get another wrap wrapped in there, and then I'm going to come in front of the wing. Try to get it in there tight. And I'm going to bring my hackle forward all the way up behind the eye. The more hackle you have on this, the better it will float. Okay, so right here I'll bring my thread back over. I'll trap my hackle. I'm going to get a few good wraps on it. And normally I just snatch this hackle off, but being that I'm live on Facebook, it'll probably come unraveled if I do that. All right, so that's good. And now what I like to do with my humpies, with my, uh, my wolves, so in order to get this hackle pushed back and give me a nice clean eye and a head, instead of whip finishing, I do a half hitch. And that way I compact my hackle. I get a nice head. This way I know I have a nice clean eye. And if you want to add a little head cement, be my guest. And now comes the point when you're really happy that you tied with a, um, um, a, a turkey feather. So if you've ever gotten to this point, with a Wally wing and gone to split it and it didn't split and the uh, fibers pull off the side and the, and the stem is too thin to split, well, that never happens with turkey. So it's a nice substantial stem. All you need is one fiber on each side. So let me see if I can get one fiber off of here. So there we go, I have one fiber. Hold your tip and strip it down. Okay, come to the other side. If you get two, it's not the end of the world, but one is better because you know basically what you're doing is your strip is you're you're peeling your, your stem into thirds. Okay, so my wings are down. Okay, and now I can just take this part, snatch it out, 
and then I have to trim my wings. So be careful here, you don't want to go too short. Okay, and then if I want to plump my wings up, I can just press down on the tips, widen them out. My good friend Paul Shirtliff taught me this fly. He's a, a, a fellow tire that ties on another couple other pro teams with me. And anyway, so that is the turkey wally wing. You'll find it's a lot more durable. Um, you know, when I tied with duck, what I found is that you know, one good uh, cutthroat tooth or something like that. Um, when it hooked inside that wing, the wing was toast. And so with these, you can see they're just a lot more substantial. They're really stiff. And really the only, the big difference is that you've got to get rid of that big stem. You know, you just can't incorporate that in your fly like you would with a duck fly. Do you have issues with this fly twisting your leader? Um... You know, I don't, I don't have any problem with this fly on my leader. Um, I'm usually fishing, um, you know, 4X or, or the, what is the trout hunter that comes in half sizes, the 4.5. Um, I like that a lot. Um, and, um, you know, I, I don't seem to have that problem at all. So, I mean, it, you know, it's not gonna, it's not gonna cast any differently than a parachute Adams or, you know, any other kind of wolf fly. So, anyway, so that's the first fly. Does anybody have any questions? <sighs> so, again, if you're just tuning in, my name is Dave Allison. I'm an ambassador for Norvice and uh, Semperfly um, and uh, Moonlit. And um, I, um, I'm on Instagram at West Texas Bugs, and um, um, I'm also um, the past president of the High Country Fly Fishers in Park City, um, Park City, uh, Utah. So let's see what. Uh, so the hook sizes um, I talked about earlier. It depends on what mayfly you're um, you're trying to imitate. If I'm doing a blue wing olive, I'm an 18. If I'm, um, if I'm fishing, if I'm trying to tie a green drake, I'm at a size 10 and, um, and that's it. You know, it's, uh, you can change the color. You can use goose biot, you can use quill, you can use, um, um, you know, whatever you want for your body, for your tail. It's just basically a mayfly. The, the turkey flats, so these are nature spirit turkey flats. And they come in white and cream and gray, all different colors. And what you want to do for a good turkey flat, what you're looking for, is... I don't know if I have a bad one in here. I don't think I do. But you can see that I have um, really nice even tips. So sometimes you'll have some, some damaged tips in there, but... You know, this is, this is all I'm using right here. So there's a lot of waste, but, you know, it makes a pretty bulletproof Wally Wing. So, all right. So let me move to the next fly. You know, like I said, I, you know, I did Denver and I did Boise this year and then COVID came and my season was over and I really haven't worked on any new patterns. So I'm kind of doing what I was doing at show season last year. Um, so my next fly is a uh, Bob Quigley pattern and probably everybody knows Bob Quigley from the um, the hackle stacker and the Quigley cripple and this was one of his late, later flies before he passed away and this is called a film critic it's an emerger pattern and it kind of um, it kind of um, incorporates everything from the hackle stacker and the Quigley cripple all in one fly. Um, it's a great emerger pattern. This fly fishes really well. And again, you know, this is a fly that um, if I'm imitating a uh, blue wing olive, I'm tying them small. If I'm, you know, if I'm tying a, um, uh, a brown drake or green drake, a PMD, I'm going bigger. I'm changing my colors. So I'm going to demonstrate it on a size 14 hook. 
This is a Moonlit MLO 61. I don't know if these have been released not or not, Brandon, so I may be outing you here, but uh, it's a great little emerger hook. These are barbless hooks, and uh, if you haven't tried Moonlit hooks, you need to, uh, need to give them a shot. Someone wants to know if you find releasing fish easier the smaller the fly. Um, the smaller the fly, uh, actually, no, I don't. The smaller the fly, sometimes it's harder. Yeah, okay. um, they didn't hear my question. What's that? You have to repeat the question I asked you. Oh, so the question is, sorry about that. The question is, do I find it easier to release fish on a smaller fly? And when they get really small, no, it's uh, kind of a pain in the butt. Um, you know, a, a size, the size fly that fits my hand. Um, you know, 14, and 14, 12, 10, and bigger, but barbless. You know, barbless is really what makes it easier to um, to uh, release a, a fish. Um, but yeah, when I when I start fishing 20s and 22s, I find it I find everything difficult. So, all right. So I've got my uh, MLO 61 size 14 in the vise. I'm going to stay with my uh, my Semperfly waxed 8 dot and brown olive. What I'm going to do is I'm going to start right behind the eye again. I want to I keep my thread. I'm going to spin it nice and flat. And I just want a nice, smooth thread body. And on this fly, I am going around the bend a little bit. So about right there. And I'll, uh, I'll try to honor Bob Quigley with this fly and do it the way he did it. So he tied a shuck and a tail. So for shuck material, just any kind of Z-Lon, uh, this is Semperfly's uh, shuck yarn, and the color is done. And uh, so I just want to take a little piece of this off, and this is going to be my shuck. And I don't need quite that thick, so I'm going to go ahead and just kind of peel it off a little bit. Get a little thinner piece. I don't need to measure this. Okay, so there's my shuck, and the easiest way to put this on is just to um, grab both ends and come under and lift your thread, and then let the weight of your bobbin just set it right down on top. Pull it tight before you, before you do any wraps, and now it's trapped. Um, and then you can decide whether or not you want to incorporate this shuck material into your body or if you want to cut it off here. Um, I'm going to go ahead and cut mine off here. And then to measure how long this shuck is, so if you have a Norvice, this little uh, screw on the side, that's what it's for. It's really not for tightening your jaws. It's to let you know exactly where to cut your shuck off at. I don't know if Tim knew that, but... Um, I don't know why this keeps going in and out of focus. Am I zoomed in enough? Is it? Can everybody see well? Okay. All right. And so, like I said, Bob Quigley tied these with a tail and a shuck. So I'm going to use a little clump of uh, Coke de Leon. And again, it's not really important how many. Some. That's how many. That's how many you want to use here. And I'm going to tie this in exactly the way I did the mayfly. I just hold the tips, put it at a 45 degree angle on my side of the hook, and then when my thread wraps come over, it brings my Coke de Leon right up on top. And then I can just adjust it. So, you know, this the, the uh, butt end of this fly hangs down in the film. On the last fly, you know, I want my tail to be kind of, kind of, um, uh, kind of long because my my tail is actually you know an outrigger for my fly to float, so it's not that I'm just trying to mimic a mayfly tail as much as I need I need a little bit of um, something to suspend my fly in the back end. This fly, we want the the butt to sit. Um, we want the butt to sit in the water, so I can go a little shorter, but I want it to be a little bit longer than my um, than my shuck material. Now on this one, I am going to go ahead and just incorporate those Coke de Leon butts all the way in, and mostly because they would pull out if I didn't. Clip those off, 
and now it's time to do a body. So, you know, again, um, uh, Goose Biot looks really good on this fly. Um, um, you know, the quills, the synthetic quills from uh, Semperfly, the, um, the ones that imitate the peccary, make a really cool looking um, uh, uh, cripple. But um, I'm just going to use dubbing. Uh, actually, you know what I'll do? I'll do something different. I'll use, instead of just dubbing, um, I'll use some uh, pheasant tail. And I'll use, uh, so this is uh, just uh, dyed ginger. It's a light color. And uh, so let me take, um, I'm going to take about, I don't know, four or five fibers here. And I'm going to cut the uh, connective tissue off of the uh, end of the feather. I used to be in veterinary medicine, so I say stuff like connective tissue. Anyway, um, I'm going to bring all my tips together, flatten out my thread, and I'm going to start right back here. I'm going to start trapping those fibers. I'm going to bring this over and stop it right in front before my tails start. And then if you want, um, you can go ahead and do some... Uh, Put some wire in this if you're going to use pheasant tail, just because we know what happens to pheasant tail after a, after a, uh, a fly hits it or a fish hits it. So, <clears throat> hey Mickey, how you doing? So now I'm going to just tie in uh, some wire. This is some fine wire. I don't really want it to show as a rib. I just want it to reinforce my fly, make it a little stronger. And then right here, I'm going to go ahead and throw a, a half inch. And if you notice, I've still got about a third of my um, of my shank left from where my body stops because I got a lot of stuff to put on the front of this fly. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and take uh, my pheasant, and I'm going to use some hackle pliers. I don't know that you necessarily have to, but um, you know, you got them, you pay money for them, use them, right? All right, I'll give it just a little bit of a twist. I already got one strand that broke loose, so I'm going to have to deal with that. Two strands that broke loose. That's okay. And I'm going to bring my body to right there. Come in. Trap the fibers that uh, behave themselves down and get rid of those other guys and really tie this down well. Pull the thread out of the way, get rid of that, get rid of this guy, get rid of this guy, okay. And since I, um, I wrapped in the regular direction, oops, oh no, that ever happened to you guys? It's the first time that's ever happened to me. Maybe I should have dubbed this thing. That's it, I'm not, I'm not giving up. I'm not giving up. This is the easy part of this fly too. All right. Kevin wants to know who makes those hackle pliers. Oh, who wants who makes these hackle pliers? These are C and F. They are too cool for school. They come in um, different sizes. Here's some nice little midge ones, and they have the rubber ring on them, so that when you're pulling, you can put the proper tension. C and F makes a lot of cool stuff. They make. Um, my favorite uh, deer, uh, deer hair um, stacker, it's got a tungsten weight in the bottom and it's got two different collars that come with it. One smaller and one bigger. Because you know, you can't spend enough money on fly tying stuff. You may think you can. Your wife likes to do that. Your significant other may tell you that you are, but I'm, I guarantee you it's not true. When people ask me, like, what do I need to start fly tying? I tell them to go out and buy the most expensive stuff going because eventually they're going to have that anyway. 
and I'm saving them money from buying all that stuff that they're not going to use. That was my path. All right, I'm going to try this one more time. If this pheasant tail breaks on me again, I'm dubbing this thing. Okay, so, and these have a pretty nice wide jaw on them, so they can get, you know, quite a few fibers in there, but I keep missing one. There we go. Give it a little twist, not too much, and one more time. I might have hook, hit my hook point uh, before. I didn't see that, but you guys might have seen it. You guys might have known that was going to happen all along. All right, there we go. There we go. This is how it's supposed to work. All right. So, now that I wrapped my pheasant in the correct way, I'm going to counter wrap my wire just to give it some strength. This is a really fine wire. If you wanted to use something thicker so that you had a real pronounced rib, you certainly could do that. Um, I don't know that that's necessarily important with this fly, but you know. There's no rules to fly tying. Except that you have to tie on a Norvice. I think that's the only rule I've ever heard. And then pop your wire off. All right, now this is where it gets good. So for my wing and for my, uh, my uh, cider, and for my loop, I'm going to use just some EP trigger point fibers. You could use Parapost. You could use, um, you know, that stuff that comes on a card. You can use whatever you like to use for your parachute atoms. Um, I like this stuff because it's nice and straight. All right. And I want to take off half of what I think I'm going to need because I'm going to double this. So I'm going to come in here and I'm going to cut it. And this is my, this is going to be my, my post, my cider post, and my wing. So what I want to do now is I want to bring my ends together. I want to marry my ends, as Bob Quigley used to say. And I'm just going to tie that down right here. I'm going to bring it a little bit to my side. Come over with a loose wrap and then pull. Okay. Now this piece is going to become my wing bud. So I'm just going to bring it up nice and short. And there, that's my wing bud. This is the, is the secret to this whole fly. So I'm going to bring my thread and I'm going to keep my loop right on top. And I'm going to bring it right to about a thread wrap away from being right behind my eye. I need some space there. Okay, so I'll leave that hanging. Now I'll take my Cree. And with this fly, you don't need to worry about taking um, half off and making them pretty or anything like that. But I do need a pretty long stem. So I'm going to strip it down. There we go. So I have a pretty long stem, and I want to take my, my hackle, I want it shiny side up, and I want that stem right on top. So I put it a little bit to my side, let my thread carry it over. I'm going to wrap that in nice and tight. Okay, now bring your loop back, hold it with your finger, and then just get that first wrap right in there where it's right in front of that wing bud. Okay, and now you're gonna come forward and really compress. 
Okay, and you can see I still have that space behind my eye, and I have this loop that I got my finger in. Okay, now I need to dub. And again, I'm just going to use the Semperfly Fine and Dry. I've got some green laying here on my desk. Wet my fingers in my money counting sponge. And dub. And I don't need my dubbing to be very thick, because you can see I've already got quite a bit of bulk there for my thorax. I just need to cover it. So I'm going to put my dubbing on really thin. You know, less is always better with dubbing. Unless it's purple dubbing. Isn't that right, Brandon? Brandon Moon's on. He, he doesn't think that there's any fly in the world except purple. I don't know how he got that way. But I guarantee you, you know, dubbing comes in all these colors for a reason, right? I don't even see any purple in there. What's up with that? Okay. Take your finger and slide your dubbing noodle up. Oop. Can't do that with this. And then I'm going to start right here, and I want to dub from the front to the back. And when I get right in front of my wing, I'm going to lift my loop, and I need to park my thread behind my loop and on the other side of my fly. And that's really important, and you'll see why here in a second. Okay, so now we're doing a hackle stacker, right? But instead of using thread, I'm using Z-line. So I've just got my finger in the loop. I'm holding it up in the air with my left index finger. And then, okay, you see what's going on here? My hackle is not wanting to, there we go. I thought I was going to have to train that stem. Okay, so I'm just passing my hackle between my two hands. And I want to do nice, flat, compact wraps. And I'm going to bring it up. And if you really want to know how high to bring this, you can take your loop and bend it over. When it's right at the eye, that's when you're done. But if you tie enough of them, you don't really have to do that. You can kind of, kind of tell. So I'm going to just bring it up. Get rid of this unruly guy. Okay, so when I get to there, now I'm just going to bring it back down through. And when I get to right above my fly, now I just need some weight. So I'm going to use my cool CNF hackle pliers. And again, this little knob on the side of your Norvice, it's not for tightening your jaws. It's to rest your, uh, your hackle pliers over. And now I can let go. Everything's tied. It's, it's, it's not secure tied in, but it's not going to unwrap. I don't have to hold the loop anymore. This is the same thing with a hackle stacker. And once I'm at this point, with a hackle stacker, I'm using my thread for my loop. Okay, so now I do need to tie this hackle off. So the way I do it, just like I do a parachute atoms, I'm going to lift and I'm going to take, so since I've parked my thread on the other side behind my post, now I can bring it up and I can tie off my hackle right to my post. And because I can manipulate my post, unlike a parachute atoms, I can make sure that I don't tie down any hackle fibers and I got to make sure and miss that little wing bud back there. Okay, so that was two. I'll go around one more time. Leave my thread parked back there and now I can come in and I can trim off my hackle and everything's tied off. Okay, all right, now here's the next dilemma. I have to get my thread from behind this wing up to my eye. And if I do it just like that, that works. But you can see I've got, well, you don't really see it because I've got uh, the same color dubbing and the same color thread. But there's a there's thread that goes through the bottom of my thorax. And I don't know about you, but that's just got to irritate the fish to no end, right? So what I do is instead of coming under, is I come over. So now I'm on top of my thorax, and that's going to be covered in hackle anyway. 
and I take a wrap around my hook, but now I'm wrapping in the wrong direction. So I just throw a half hitch, and now I'm wrapping in the right direction. Problem solved. The thread underneath doesn't show, and if you're using, you know, if you're using a thread that doesn't match the color of your thorax, you'll see, you'll see that thread come, you know, diagonally right underneath your thorax there, and uh, that can't be good for fishing. So, all right. So now <clears throat> I'm going to take my money counting sponge. I'm going to wet my fingers, and I'm going to come back and I'm going to preen all of this hackle backwards. And just take your time, but you want to get all of it. Okay, so I've got it all back. And now I'm going to take my loop, and I'm going to lay it next to the eye on my side. And you see, I've got a lot of uh, slack in my loop. So I'm just going to lay it right there next to my eye. I'm going to bring my thread. I'm going to come over nice and loose. Two wraps. Now you can see I've got that, that loop, and I've got two wraps on. Hold on to your bobbin, grab your loop, and you're ready? Stack. Okay, and that's, that's up. Okay, now come in and pull everything back to expose your eye. And with your thread wraps, when I come over the top, I pull back. And that really cleans my eye up. And, you know, if you wanted to, you could use a little bit more dubbing and create a head here. I don't really don't think it's necessary. And I think that we're painfully close to uh, crowding our eye at this point anyway. So now I'm going to come in and I'm just going to whip finish. And I'm doing the same thing with my whip finish. I'm kind of pulling with each time I come over the top. I'm pushing back. Making sure that my eye stays nice and clean. So now, I'm going to come in, I'm going to lift my loop. I'm going to pull it back and I'm going to lift it just a little bit above my hackle and trim it. Alright, so now that loop is my wing bud. It's my cider post, so when I throw this thing out there, I can see it. And that is Bob Quigley's Film Critic. I think it's one of the best engineered flies on the planet. And um, they fish really well. They're, they're bulletproof. Um, I've never seen one come apart. Um, you know, do you need to tie the... Um, do you need to tie the two tails? You know, you don't. You could probably get away with just the shuck. You know, out of respect for Bob Quigley, I think, you know, I like to do it as close to um, as close to original as I possibly can. But uh, this thing keeps being, going in and out of focus. Um, but anyway, that's, uh, that's Quigley's Cripple. Uh, not Quigley's Cripple, Quigley's Film Critic. All right, so what time is it? 15 more minutes. I got something for you. So everybody probably fishes elk hair caddis. I've got a fly. Some of you may have seen it. It's from uh, uh, Norway. It's called the Diret. And that translates in Norwegian to the animal. And um, so, this will be my last fly, and for you guys that just came on, if you don't know, my name is Dave Allison. Um, I'm at West Texas Bugs on, um, on Instagram. I'm an ambassador for Norvice, for Semperfly, for Moonlit. Um, a past president of the TU chapter in Park City, Utah, called High Country Fly Fishers. And um, so if you see me at a show, come up and say hello. This, this video will also be uh, posted on Norvice's uh, YouTube page. And um, so let's get on to this next fly. So this, this is the best floating caddis I've ever tied in my life. 
So I'm going to get some, uh, this is just some uh, elk body hair. It's probably nature spirit. Um, they make pretty good stuff. Not as good as Semperfly, but you know, close. And then I'm going to take my uh, comb. I'm going to clean my stack out really nice. Get all the, the gradu out of there. Make sure I don't have any broken tips. Okay, and then I'm going to stack it. Where'd my cool little stacker go? CNF stacker. Get your tips in there. Try not to make your hook bounce when you uh, stack your hair. Okay, so that might be just a little bit thick. I'm going to take about a third of it out. That looks better. All right. Let me get my thread started here. So I'm going to just start. I'm going to do a full thread base again. I, I, I don't know if this is important, but for me, I don't like tying anything down to a bare metal shank. I like something under there. Um, I don't know if that really makes any difference, but it certainly uh, certainly matters to me. Okay, so I'm going to tie this in kind of like a stimulator. I'm going to grab my tips. I'm going to spin my thread loose. And then here's a little trick. If, you, if you're one of those guys that every time you tie deer hair on a hook, it spins and goes around the other side. Come up in the air. Do a wrap around your deer hair. That's two wraps up in the air. And then I pull, bring it right down onto the hook. And now I've bundled my deer hair before it ever even got to the hook. And then when I come and put my pressure on, it's sitting right on top. Okay, and then what a lot of people do with stimulators and things like that is they'll start wrapping forward from here and try to collect all this hair. And uh, that's just crazy. So what you want to do is you want to lift all of your hair up, all of your hair up, bring your thread forward till you get eh, maybe a couple of, maybe an eye length back from the eye. Then bring your hair down, come over and trap it, Oops. and then just wrap back. And you still get that nice body, and you didn't have to chase all that hair forward. Okay? All right, so now all of this I'm going to need, so I'm not going to cut it off just yet. And there's some um, controversy about how hard you should wrap this these shafts down. You know, they say if you wrap it too hard, you're going to crush all the air out of those hair shafts, and you're going to cause your fly not to float very well. And uh, that kind of makes sense to me. So I, I wrap it down secure, but I don't really crank on it. All right, so I'm going to take my uh, Cree hackle again, strip a little stem off, and I'm going to tie it in right back here. I'm going to get that tied in pretty well. And then I'm going to use, I am going to use a little bit of wire on this fly um, just for durability. I don't need it to show, so I can use something really fine. This is uh, Semperfly's March Brown Fine. You're probably wondering why I didn't tie my wire in first. And uh, I'll tell you why. It's because I've been building furniture for the last three months and not tying flies. But it's like riding a bike, isn't it? All right. I got my wire tied in. 
So I don't know, all you guys are probably tying on Norvice. If you uh, have trouble with a uh, material clip, this is how I do mine. I put a spring around the shaft with two rubber O-rings and it works out just slick as it can be. Okay, so let me get my, there we go. All right, so now I need to dub and uh, once again, you know, uh, a lot of people like to tie their caddis, their elk hair caddis in green. Some people like to tie them in orange. Um, I'm going to use uh, something a little different. I'm going to use this uh, Beaver Plus. And I'm going to use some, uh, I'm gonna use some of this Red Fox. So Beaver Plus is a good dry fly dubbing. It's got a little bit of sparkle in it. Fish dig it. It's easy to dub. Okay, so I'm going to bring my thread down. My body dubbed. I'm not really going for thin and pretty here. Slide your noodle up. This is a really easy pattern. It floats. Unbelievable. Okay. Let me get up here. Go ahead and lift all my hair. Get my thread underneath. Go ahead and throw a uh, half hitch. I, I'm obsessed with half hitches because I think my thread will pull off when I put it on my post. Uh, my good friend Ken Burkholder in Boise, who's been tying on Norvice since Norm was a teenager, he uh, tells me I'm nuts, but I can't seem to stop doing it. Okay, and now I'm going to dub, I mean hackle, the entire body. Like I said, this fly, the diret in Norwegian means the animal. I like that. I like a fly with a reputation. Okay, so the body is hackled. Where is that guy? Bring my thread in. Right behind my deer hair. Tie it off. Bring my wire in, counter wrapped. Wiggle it through. Oh, I'm trapping a lot of stuff here. Tie off your wire. Got five minutes. I'm going to make it. Okay, now I'm going to bring my hair up. I'm going to build a little bit of a dam in front. I'm going to go ahead and do my uh, do half hitches here. And then, just like an elk hair caddis, gather all your hair up, come in at the same angle as your hook eye, give it a crew cut. And that is the animal. It's the best floating caddis. Fish dig it, and uh, hey, it's Norwegian. So what could be better than that? Oofta. So next week, uh, I think Joe Perez is tying. Same time, same station. 
and um, um, I think uh, there was something else I'm supposed to mention here. Oh, it's about likes, right? Or um, share their live on their personal pages for a chance to win this week's Norvice giveaway. 50 shares equal one winner. 100 shares equal two winners. One new winner for every 50 shares. Make sure to say this several times throughout the entire live video. So I'm saying it. I don't know what Tim's giving away, but it's got to be good. So the tool I use to half hitch, this is a, um, this is a, uh, uh, Renz I think it's a Renzetti, um, uh, it's just a Renzetti whip finisher, but it's got a, it's got a hole in the end. So it's, uh, it works really good for that. So I sure appreciate everybody coming and, uh, Rick Jensen, how you doing brother? Mr. Antonetti, all my boys are here, so hope to see everybody at some shows next year. Hope we have shows next year, and that's all I got. Thanks, CJ. Thanks, Johnny. Thanks, D. Thanks, Edward. Thanks, Edward. I bet I see you on Thursday, Rick. Nope, I haven't moved yet. I'm still trying to sell my house, Fred. So go over here. Come over here and buy it for me, will you? I'll give you a deal. It comes with a great fly tying studio. Thanks, Alan. Thanks, Sean. Thanks, Sean. Thanks, Alan. Thanks Colin. Sounds like it's going to snow on us on uh, Tuesday. Mickey says these are these kind of flies now. Thank you, Mickey. Yeah, they're all trout bugs. Full show. Yeah, Edward, I'm at uh, West Texas Bugs on uh, Instagram. Because I'm from West Texas. If you can't tell by the way I talk. I I'm not so glad, Fred. I'm ready to be in Montana. All right, folks, I'm going to sign off. Thanks for watching. It's been fun.